Welcome to the Toffee Blues, your source for all things Everton. And welcome to my instant match reaction to Everton 1, Aston Villa 1. Everton snatch a late draw against relegation threatened Aston Villa in a game where, again, we were poor, very, very poor. We got a point that we didn't deserve, similar to the Southampton game. We did all right. We didn't lose a home. Carlo Ancelotti's unbeaten run as manager at Goodison goes on, which is astonishing when you consider how poorly we've played in the last two home games. But we once again, we got away with one because we were terrible. We started off quite well. I thought we played the first quarter of the game before that drinks break. I thought we were really good, knocking it round really well, threatening. But after that, it slowly sort of started to ebb away, I thought. The second quarter, if you like, just before half-time, this Villa started to grow into the game, and then I think they dominated the majority of the second half, certainly up until they scored the goal, which was a free kick a free kick that was given away softly by Andre Gomez. Um, the cross comes in. A couple of players had, could have thrown themselves at it. They were queuing up for it. We, they lost the markers. It wasn't really good defence, and Pickford dived the wrong way. And anyway, it ends up going in, and it looks as though we're, they're going to be the first team to let Aston Villa have a cl have a clean sheet away from home, and all those bad statistics and whatnot. And for one, Everton actually got a bit of luck, and we did, it, you'd like to say we made our own luck, but we didn't. We played poorly, still. But we got one good cross into the box, and Theo Walker heads the ball really well, to be honest. And it's a really good looping header, and. Uh, the, I think it was Edry Conser, the goal scorer for Aston Villa, who couldn't actually clear it off the line. He could have been the hero at both ends, but unfortunately, well, for their sake, couldn't overhead kick it away and Everton get a goal back. And then it looked as though we might have even gone on to try and win the game with a few set pieces in quick succession towards the end. We were really pushing and a couple of chances. But that was all it was going to be and to be honest that was the most out of push we deserved because really we should have lost Villa with a better side and it pains me to say that because they're 19th in the Premier League and now looking like they're almost definitely going to go down so it's it doesn't show us in any glory at all and I mean we shouldn't be surprised after the disgraceful performances of the last three games it was a marginal improvement but not by much and we only got the point really because we were up against the team equally as fragile as we are. Um, as far as individual displays are concerned, I thought Michael Keane was really solid at the back. Jared Branthwaite came on for Holgate, who went off with an injury. I thought Branthwaite came on and was really good as well. The defenders were pretty solid. Luca Dean tried his best going forward. He was one of the ones who really seemed to drag us forward, which was good to see. Seamus Coleman, after his umpteenth rallying call after the Wolves game, didn't really do much to you know, make anything of those words. I thought his performance was poor. I didn't think he put in a captain's display, put it that way. After such rousing words after the Wolves game and, and the fact that Carlo Ancelotti actually supported him in his words and said that's what a captain should do, but his captain should also be leading us on the pitch and he didn't lead us at all today. It was very... Another insipid display from him, and we we just didn't he just didn't get us going forward down that right flank. It wasn't helped by a Wobi, who I thought was pretty toothless again. I mean, he he looked a bit more direct than what you'd expect from him, but still no decent service into the area. Bar one good cross that no one got on the end of anyway. Uh, Bernard was very poor. He picked up a few good positions like we like we know he can. But he just kept getting knocked off the ball. He kept taking touches the wrong way and m making the wrong decision regularly. It was a very off performance from Bernard as well. And it was also an off performance from Richarlison, to be honest. I mean, he, the more starved of service him and Calvert Lewin become recently, I do have noticed that their performances have begun to drop. And perhaps those two have become a little bit demoralised by the horrific service they're getting from the players behind them. Because. Neither of them look quite the players that they were before the lockdown. And while I, I'm not, I wasn't impressed with either of them today, I thought, what else are they supposed to do? They're, they're, they're trying the hardest, and sometimes you, you can try too hard. And the, the service isn't good. If the service isn't good enough, you're not going to be able to 
get anything. And I'm not going to point fingers too much at the attackers when the midfielders are so disjointed that they're not actually linking up with them in the first place. But you'd still like to think we could get a few more chances out of it. And thankfully, it was a very unlikely sort of Theo Walcott's header, but that was what got us the point. It was a very similar game, dare I say, it, to the final home game under Sam Allardyce when we were one nil down at home to Southampton, and it was a again, it was a relegation threatened side at the time against a very very underperforming Everton and. It was a late Tom Davis goal that nobody really expected. I thought we were again. That was another game where I can remember. I thought we're just gonna like stagger to the end and lose one nil to a team who we should never be getting beat at home against. And but thankfully we got away with it again, just like we did on that day, and we got a draw. And in a very similar sense to the Tom Davis goal against Southampton, I didn't really cheer it that much. It was just like, oh, that's good. And it really didn't move me much, which is sort of symbolic of the way I feel about this Everton team at the moment. I can't really connect with the team and the lack of character in it. It's just, I'm astonished we even managed to pull that point back there against Villa. And that's a damning indictment of a team, if ever there was one, because Villa aren't exactly the most uh, defensively solid side, as I think the commentators were regularly pointing out during that game but nonetheless we got the point and I suppose that's a step in the right direction after the Wolves game if nothing else but that's the only good thing was that we actually got a point and not zero the performance wasn't much better than Wolves and again that's saying something and there's still a long way to go and it's it's hard to be pleased about this kind of performance it was just another insipid one that's going to see us to the end of a pretty insipid resumption of the season since the lockdown and you know two more to go and then roll on the transfer window because that's all I've got one eye on now for as far as an Everton fan's concerned I just want to get to that transfer window and try and strengthen this squad because I'm pretty much done with this season and probably was done with it when lockdown started but I'm most certainly done with it now. Two games to go. 180 more minutes of probably rubbish football from Everton this season. And then we can hopefully try and start putting some building blocks in place for next season because that's where all our hopes got to be channeled into now because we're not going to be able to enjoy much more of this season. I can guarantee you that if we carry on playing like this. But there you have it, guys. Everton won. Aston Villa won. Uh, let us know how you feel about these performances, I, can't, I still can't imagine you're thrilled, but hey, we've got a point against the relegation threatened team, so, you know, we're, we're moving in the right direction, guys, we might actually stay up with this right next season, but yeah, there we go, let us know, drop us a comment, give this video a like, and also subscribe to the Toffee Blues for more, maybe, hopefully more upbeat content, but I can't guarantee nothing, and certainly can't promise you anything there, but nonetheless, subscribe, and thank you for tuning in on the Toffee Blues.